When I see the difficult situations that our officers get placed in all the time, it really makes my heart go out for the work they do. Thank you for joining us on today's bonus active self-protection badge cam lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Bossier City in Louisiana in the United States. Today's video is brought to you thanks to Magtech Ammunition, the official ammunition supplier for all range activities of active self-protection. It's 5.45 in the morning and police have been called here because this woman is acting erratically and has come back behind the counter at this hotel and is talking on the phone and now is waving around a pair of scissors. And you can see the officer starting to put on gloves going, man, I'm gonna definitely have to go hands on with this woman. So again, the staff there who you can see in the top and in the right are have called police because she's not on staff there. She's just acting erratically, has come into the office. And now he starts talking with her and saying, ma'am, you gotta put those down, whatever. Now we've got badge cam on this one. You're gonna hear here on the badge camp that she starts calling him racial slurs and now comes towards him with the scissors. And so he draws his firearm and actually puts his pistol mounted light on and shines that in her face. So now he's starting to tell her, hey, you got to put those scissors down or whatever. And she's just not having it. She's again, continuing to, to send racial epithets his way and saying that he is going to have to kill her. And so he tells her, don't do this, ma'am. Don't do it. If you come around that, that uh, uh, desk, I'm going to have to shoot you. And she's just decided that she does not like that. So she's just going to charge him. And when she does, he double taps her right in the high center chest and puts her down right there, calls it in. And now he is going to uh, send everybody else out. He's going to say, hey, everybody, get the heck out of there where he is going to wait for her. If you go read the news stories that are linked in the description, uh, the, uh, the DA has determined that this one was justified and the officer was fine. And they're just not sure why she went the way that she went. Now, we do have the badge cam. It does have audio. So let's listen in on the badge cam. Then we'll learn lessons. Hey! Hey, get off the phone! There's only one copy. They're, they're trying to slay me. I got that band here. And the boys are, they're, they're trying to slay me. I'm on my, look here. They've been after me. Ma'am, put those scissors me. down. You're going to have to shoot me. Put those no, scissors you're not down. Taking, no, you're not taking, shoot me. You're not taking, shoot me. You're going to have to shoot me. Please, lady, call number one. Put those scissors down. You hold the phone like Hey, hey put those scissors down. You're going to have to shoot me. Put those scissors down. Put those Put those Hey, go back over there. You're gonna have to shoot and kill me. You're gonna have to shoot and kill me. You ain't taking me. You're gonna slay me. 104 headquarters, 1033 the channel. You're Give me a super back over you're here. Back we got a white female. She has to. Yeah, you ain't calling. You ain't calling. Hey, if you come over here, I will kill you. Okay, kill <laughs> Drop the scissors. Drop the scissors. Shots fired. Shots fired. White female on the ground, still got scissors in her hand. Shots fired, shots fired. Drop the scissors! Drop the scissors! Hey, back up, everybody back up. Hey, get out, get out, get out, get out. Hurry up. Go that way, go that way. Ma'am, drop the scissors, please. Drop the scissors, ma'am, please. Drop them, drop them. Take one to get the fire department route in route. Tough stuff for him to be in. I feel like that it was a place where he probably didn't have any answers that would have been considered a clear win. If you want to get better with your self-defense, one of the ways that you can do that is following our Facebook page. Load up your Facebook app, search Active Self Protection, follow us there from links from all over the web to help you get better every day as a self-defender. So I set them side by side here so that you can see what's going on in each of them. And the first thing I want to pay attention to is you see the officer putting his gloves on here. This officer is under absolutely no delusions that this woman is going to, you know, comply well or whatever. And so he's starting with a little bit of PPE because he knows he is going to get in it with this woman. And this is a big difference between law enforcement encounters and private citizen encounters. In law enforcement encounters, they tend to end or they have to end when it's an actual defensive encounter with someone in custody or, you know, again, they go hands on far more often, whereas in private citizen encounters, they break away. So this is a difference in mission that we have to understand to contextualize our tactics, our techniques and procedures. Now I want to notice as well, you notice here that the officer is pointing his finger at the woman and issuing commands. 
but I do want to notice that that escalated her verbal response as well. So learn those verbal judo techniques that rather than pointing fingers at, at people, sometimes a raised hand or something like that can be a little helpful to de-escalate a conflict. Yes, he's telling her what to do, but sometimes that pointed finger can be seen as a threat. So that's something that I generally don't recommend, though I get it, sometimes officers have to actually command. Now, notice here that she starts hurling racial epithets at him, and you heard it in the, uh, you know, in, in the badge cam version. And of course, we utterly deplore that, and we absolutely decry that here at Active Self Protection because we believe all people are endowed with the image of God, and therefore of uh, infinite value, worth, and dignity. And we should treat one another with respect. But people do use language as a weapon, and you have to have the emotional control. And I think this officer did in order to not retaliate at that and not take that offense that is being given. They are giving offense, but that doesn't mean you have to take offense. And so you have to stay in emotional control to do that, and I think the officer did. Now, when she comes forward with the scissors in her hand is when he draws his firearm. And I think that that's completely reasonable in this instance. She decides to come over that countertop with a pair of scissors. He is absolutely going to have to defend himself with deadly force. So getting the gun out of the holster quickly so that he can defend himself as she comes over that counter is, I think, wise and is, I think, a great reason to have to work on your speed out of the holster. That when it's a decision that I need a gun in my hand because I may need to use it right now, that gun is have to, gonna have to come out of the holster quickly. So he does that and now notice that he turns his pistol mounted light on. Now this is an interesting one to me because he uses that pistol mounted light as a force multiplier. And I actually think that's a good thing. He's clearly not identifying his target here. She's already well identified in a well lit room. However, that does create a photonic barrier and that does prohibit her from seeing what he is doing or where he is. It is disorienting. Now that said, does he need to point a fire at, firearm at her in this moment? I think he's okay to, but a low ready might have been better. However, recognize that he's using that light, I think in an interesting way, as a force multiplier to get her disoriented so maybe she calms down and he could talk to her and get her into custody. Now she's continuing to yell and I get that. And he's maintaining cool, I think in a very good way. Now I do want to think about something here that you notice that she's standing behind the counter and the officer is got his firearm on her. Now here's a contextual thing that I'm just going to uh, recommend he has that counter between him so she is out of contact with those scissors if he has a taser on him and I don't know that he does I'm not positive he does I think he does but I'm not positive if he did this might have been an opportunity to use it because he could be in contact with the taser and yet she's out of contact with the scissors for a moment but to do that he's gonna have to put his firearm away get the taser out and employ it very quickly. So we had a limited time frame with which to do that. As soon as she starts coming around the counter, that barrier is gone. And so therefore he has got to be ready in that point with deadly force. And that's that next point here. You gotta know when the less lethal could be used and when the lethal force is the best thing. She comes and stabs him with the, that, those scissors. That can kill him in a moment. So therefore, without another officer there to provide a lethal cover and without a barrier in between them, I don't think that the taser is a good option. So recognize that the barrier there makes that a maybe. I'm not questioning him on that because of her coming around the counter like this. Now then, he does give her one last chance and you see that he's got two hands on the gun and he is telling her, ma'am, if you come across that counter right now, this is going to, you know, I'm going to have to shoot you. And recognizing that and giving her that option and telling her, ma'am, stay where you are is incredibly important. I will say this, I always recommend to everyone, if you're gonna give commands, make them simple and positive commands. Don't say, don't go, don't come near me. Say, stay there, stay where you are. Give positive commands so that people can follow them. Now, she chooses not to, she comes forward and we see the first shot here. She's advancing on him after repeated commands in a highly agitated state, threatening him with scissors and, and coming after him hard. Is that justified conduct in the moment? unequivocally, absolutely yes. I think this is as clear as a bell that you have a deranged person who has been given many commands by law enforcement. He's clearly had the gun up for quite some time. Decide that she is going to come after him with a deadly force tool. So that first shot hit her high center chest. Now he's gonna get a second one that's gonna come at about a, uh, a 0.35 split. Now something to look at here, again, a 0.35 split is a great split at the three yards that they are. They're very close, so that pop, pop gets those two shots, but recognize that even in that, when the second shot goes off, which he did hit with, notice that she is already in that falling place. Now, you gotta recognize, though, that when he made the decision to shoot a second shot, she was still actually up. So, the things change very, very quickly, 
But the fact of the matter is he took those two shots and then when she went down, he followed her down. Next thing I see that's very good, he's not just blindly looking at her, he is tracking his front sight and keeping his front sight on the target. And as the target goes down, he goes down. Now I'm not talking about range haka here where you shoot a couple of the shots at a, a stationary target and while the stationary target stays stationary, then you go down. I don't think that's particularly helpful. But if you have targets that fall, following those targets as they go, I think is very good stuff. And he did a very good job there of shooting until the threat stops and then dropping his muzzle while he follows her down. Now, a couple of the things he's going to do here that I think are really good is going to start verbally communicating. He communicates with uh, dispatch and says, hey, shots are fired. Suspect is down. I need backup units. So he, he contributes something. He doesn't just say shots were fired. He gives not just shots fired, but also follow on information so that responding units know what's coming. And I think that's very, very wise. Then he gets the other people out of there. So he gets himself in an environment where he doesn't have to worry about bystanders. I think that's very good. And now he stays away from her. I think that again, if she was, uh, you know, if she'd been advancing with a firearm or something, he's gonna have to close that distance in order to get the firearm away from her. But the fact of the matter is she's down and therefore she's got the knife right, or the scissors right next to her still. And so his best bet is to stay out of contact and wait for some follow-up so that, you know, and some backup so that they can get to her before they try to render aid. Now, the suspect here did not make it through this one. Uh, you know, she did succumb to her injuries, but I think this officer did a good job. So let's think here about our verbal skills, about knowing that we're coming in here, about deranged people and the fact that sometimes officers are put in positions that there's nothing that they're gonna do about having to use deadly force. Let's also think about the fact that, you know, this officer did a very good job of communicating clearly both with dispatch and with the suspect. He did great with his marksmanship and with his follow-up. I'd say he really covered his ass.